Good morning. It's day four of being in the hospital with my mom. Sunday after church. She had a medical event. Um, and thought it was a stroke. Um, apparently they were TIAs, pre-strokes. Um, and uh, a trip to the walk-in clinic ended up four days going on five it's, I think it's 3.40 in the morning stepped out of the room for a minute um, going on day five it's day four of uh, a surgery to remove a 90% blocked artery um, multiple sticks and pokes and prods and tests and scans but by the grace of God um, they got the blockage out my mom is recovering well little hiccups here and there but she's recovering <clears throat> I can't tell you the importance to me I think about uh, you know, I'm a pastor, so that doesn't stop. But before I became a pastor, I was simply a lover of God. Uh, not a teacher of God, just a lover of God and really meditating on His Word. And So for me, going back to that relationship with Him and meditating on when I was being challenged by the bishop I sat under to tithe, and it was, it was funny to me. It was humorous. I couldn't keep my lights on. What do you mean tithe? What do you mean give? I, I don't have anything to give. There's nothing left at the end of the month. And I still don't have bills covered. But when he challenged me with a word and brought me back to Malachi. And how I was stealing from God. and It's still, it was unconceivable to me inconceivable. I probably said that wrong, but I couldn't conceive of how uh, why he wanted me to give. I mean, what was the purpose? He had everything. Cattle on a thousand hills. Um, but then I started to understand it wasn't about the giving because he did own everything. It was about the trusting. And it's the one area I realize that he says um, to trust him, try him in it, not to trust him, but to try him in it, to try him to see won't he open up the windows of heaven. And, you know, this is not for anybody. This is not um, meant to be a lecture or anything else. I'm just telling you what what's been going on in my head um, the last few days and being in the hospital, uh, seeing my mom struggle. And I went back to meditating on how difficult it was for me to step out. <laughs> when I tell you we were in foreclosure, I couldn't keep my lights on. Um, I was with um, uh, my husband who I adored dearly, but had been cheating on me. Um, there was so much negative but I was serving God and my kids were okay. So that was the positive going on. I trusted him. I started giving, I started by tapping the offering bucket as it went by, saying, God, give me the faith, give me the strength to give when I don't have anything left. And little by little, I trusted him. And what I realized is I didn't get more gas in my tank when I would go low on gas before the end of the week, before the paycheck came. But what happened is I had enough gas to last me through the week. It stretched. Miraculously, it stretched. We didn't have the money to keep the lights on. But miraculously, uh, the company would call us and give us some kind of um, deal that had come through or some kind of uh, uh, stipend or there's always something 
after I started giving. And I wasn't tithing at first. I was just giving. And I started again giving more and more until it reached the tithe. And my spouse at the time, who was actively cheating on me, was really angry about giving. So I gave from mine. I didn't try to give from his. Long story short, uh, that spouse ended up leaving, which is okay. Uh, but here I am all these years later. Uh, God blessed me with a husband that loved me, loves me. Now, after the first one left, um, he's blessed me with a career and an education. And now that I have, you know, happiness and peace, and I'm in my call, my mom gets sick. Really sick. Uh, understand this is not the first bout in um, a serious medical situation with her and now I understand what opening up the windows of heaven means I now understand that I can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask God for help remind him that I love him and that I've been serving him and that I've been faithful not perfect but faithful and that I need some of the blessings out of the windows of heaven. My mom that really, um, if you saw the blockage that they took out of her artery that had her getting only 5% of the blood she should have been getting to her brain. Only 5% for I don't know how long because the other artery is completely blocked and they can't do anything about it. But this one, the last one, a carotid artery, had her getting less than 5% of the amount of blood she should have been getting. First of all, that she's lived with that is amazing. And that they've taken it out and she's okay. That they took it out of a a 83-year-old who when she was born wasn't even allowed to enter a hospital. Uh, she wasn't born in a hospital. Blacks couldn't be, couldn't go to the hospital when she was born in Palestine, Texas. Uh, and then she was tortured by the time she was allowed to go to the hospital or get medical care. It was for sub substandard physicians who had racial issues and she was tortured. She was hands were put over her mouth and she was told to stop screaming and she was okay and it, she better just toughen up when she was getting dental procedures or when she was getting other medical to the point where she's so traumatized that she stayed away from the doctors as much as possible but now all these years later ironically in the um, Black History Month she's getting the best care she's ever gotten ever mm -hmm. Can I tell you the people here um, at this hospital in Everett, Washington have been miraculously kind and loving. Um, they've gone over and above. We had, we had a surgeon that came and sat and talked so gently, so lovingly to her. I don't know if you've ever dealt with surgeons. <laughs> They're great at what they do. They're not great at bedside manner. This one sent from heaven all this to say I didn't have any money to give I didn't have at this point I'd, I'd given all the ties I'd, I'd, I've served daily um, my commitment is strong all I had left is to remind God of his promises of his goodness of of the fact that I've done what he's asked me to do. And I asked him, I said, God, save my mom. And he did. It's, it's like the, um, 
Red Sea opening kind of salvation. <laughs> Again, by all intents and purposes, in the natural, she shouldn't have lived um, with the with the um, restriction of oxygen she's had. She shouldn't have be She shouldn't have been alive, and she shouldn't have made it through these TIAs that she was had many strokes, transient strokes. Um, which apparently she's been having for a couple of weeks now. I should have taken her out because of how little oxygen she's been getting. But instead, by his grace, not because I deserve it, he's opened up those windows. Was it money that he gave? Was it houses that he gave? Was not riches that he gave? He gave me back my mom. Sometimes the blessing that God gives is unlike any other that you can hope for. Money couldn't have brought my mom through this situation. But he could. I just want to share that with you. Um, among the many other blessings he's given me, he's given me an understanding of what it really means for him to open up the windows of heaven. Some people will say it's a, um, you know, that people are doing a gospel of prosperity when they talk about tithing. That's because they don't understand. It's not just about money. It's about the favor of God, which replaces everything. Anything financial that you could ever get. The favor of God is so much more. Having God listen to you when you ask him for something and then respond what money can buy that he's opened up the windows for me and I bless him for that he blesses me for that I can't bless God I can praise him I can't bless him he has what he needs but I can praise him and I do just sharing from my heart um, another moment that I've had with God that transcends anything that I've experienced in the natural blessings